Uh, yeah, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Carlos. Uh, I work for uh, CloudOps out of Montreal, Canada. I do uh, OpenStack deployment support. Uh, who's CloudOps? We deploy clouds, uh, OpenStack, and other cloud technologies. You can check us out or come to the Sengen booth at the marketplace if you want to know more. So let's start talking a little bit about uh, Neutron. Or better yet, let's start by uh, defining what an SDN solution is. So for the sake of this conversation, let's just summarize it and say that an SDN solution is a software that will offer you a Northbound API. It will offer you a way to remotely control or manage your networking devices, be it uh, software or hardware. And we will provide you a way to separate the control plane from your data plane in your network. So that's what, uh, that's what Neutron is, uh, new, uh, Northbound API plus a database. But Neutron will also give you a reference implementation to provide you a way to translate whatever the intent of your tenant when it comes to networking into an actual configuration that will let packets flow from one uh, endpoint to another. So how does Neutron do this? It do this by using, uh, how does Neutron do the reference implementation? By leveraging uh, open source components, open vSwitch, Linux Bridge, DNS mask for DNS or uh, DACP, um, IP tables for security, Linux namespaces for routing and netting or proxy ARP or any function will be implemented using a, uh, um, <clears throat> sorry, um, open source components that are orchestrated together by Neutron to achieve the flows that, uh, that you want between your, your workloads. How does, this do, uh, how does Neutron do, does this? Um, basically, it has several agents. Think the ACP agent, layer three agent, metadata agent, which are, all receive their commands using RPC solvent protocols. So why would you need to plug something else than Neutron? Well, there are several reasons. Uh, maybe you want better performance than whatever is offered to you by these open source components. Maybe you want uh, <clears throat> further security from whatever is provided you by IP tables, or you want better performance in your layer two, layer two uh, switch. Another reason might be maybe you want uh, better analytics uh, than whatever is offered you in Neutron in combination with Celometer. But I think that one of the most important reasons is because you want to have a common networking software orchestrator, not only for OpenStack, but also for other orchestrators. Maybe you're using Kubernetes, maybe you have bare metal, maybe you have Mesos, maybe you have VMware, and you want a common networking for all of those uh, orchestrators. This is what SDN will help you solve. So what other options are out there besides Neutron? So let's start by looking at what OpenStack project has to offer us. Dragonflow, which is a distributed SDN controller, it will op implement the OpenStack API, sorry, the Neutron API, but it will do this a little bit different when it comes to whatever is implemented in the, in the, in the underlay to support the flows. Uh, what it will do is we will install a local lightweight SDN controller in each compute node, so no need for a network controller or for components that running a controller. Everything is uh, distributed. So think distributed layer three, distributed routing, distributed switching, distributed ACP. Everything is distributed uh, in Dragonflow. As I said, uh, op um, OpenStack project, mostly contributed by the Chinese companies Huawei and W Cloud. Next, we have Open Daylight. Open Daylight, um, a very uh, strong community behind the project. Um, vendor and non-vendor uh, interesting contributors. So um, the power of Open Daylight, or one of the powers of Open Daylight, is that it supports multiple Salvon protocols. So whatever hypervisor you're using, whatever software switch you're using in your hypervisor, or whatever networking hardware you're using in, the, in your data center, or even in your one, Open Daylight will provide you with a protocol to orchestrate or remotely manage these devices, software or hardware. So Open Daylight will provide you, um, ODL will provide you with the MO2 or Gluon uh, plugins to plug into your OpenStack. Uh, you can uh, learn more about Gluon and other talks in the summit. Uh, Open Contrail, 
uh, open source version of Uniper Control. So the magic here is in the virtual router. Uh, basically, um, uni uh, Open Control will let you um, make service provider type connections up to your hypervisors. So think eVPN for layer two connectivity between your hypervisor or a remote site and a remote site, or maybe layer three connectivity implemented to layer three VPN. OPNFB, not an SDN solution by itself, but will let you do integration testing of different SDN solutions. So basically OP, uh, OPNFB will provide you, if you're doing NFB and you wanna do integration testing of your applications, it will provide you with scenarios that you can test. Think OpenStack with Open Daylight or OpenStack with Open Core Trail or OpenStack with no SDN, or maybe Kubernetes. And you have a, a series of, a uh, bunch of installers you can use uh, to, um, to actually install and run these scenarios. Project Calico, a very interesting approach, supports, supports multiple orchestrators, and it do this by implementing the common language that everybody can talk, layer three, IP. So how does it do this in, in OpenStack? Uh, you have your ML2 plugin that will push configurations to each CD. This will be picked up by Felix, which is the agent, agent running in the hypervisor or in your, in your um, bare metal server. And uh, this guy will push security using IP tables or routing, uh, BGP routing using the BERT open, open source software. Uh, you can even do BGP route reflectors uh, if you want to scale up your data center and uh, your whatever you're connecting to Calico. You can even go public cloud with this. Big switch networks, uh, if you're doing white box, either with Dell or HP, and you want an uh, um, a solution that will orchestrate your physical fabric and make it look like one big switch, this is what big switch does. So you have two options. You can either install the agent in the hypervisor uh, the, the switch like BX, we will let you offload layer three into the fabric, or you can choose not to install uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the, the agent, which is actually just um, an agent that pushes uh, um, flows into the kernel, OBS-based kernel. So, sorry, into the kernel of, 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 the, of the kernel component of OBS, or you can use the, um, n you can choose not to go with the agent. In this case, you will be using the Neutron reference architecture components for layer three. New Arch Networks, very cool solution. This is what I call the um, Ferrari of OpenStack, of, sorry, of SDN solutions, because you can support everything. Think uh, VMware, OpenStack, CloudStack, containers, OpenShift, Kubernetes, all the hypervisors, uh, support for multi-protocol multi BGP, uh, access control lists, service chaining for layer two, layer four. So very cool solution, uh, check it out. Um, analytics based on Hadoop, which is also very interesting. What else do we have in the, whatever we have in the um, provider? We have VMware, VMware, you have two options, ENSXV, if you're only doing ESXi hypervisors, um, and of course, if you're doing VMware integrated OpenStack, this is what makes sense. Of course, you can also use it with all the open supports other OpenStack releases like Red Hat Director or Mirantis, or you can choose to do NSXT version 1.1 if you're also doing KVM and not only ESX. Uh, Newton and Mitaka is supported here, and you can also automate using different automation tools. One interesting feature that's in beta state is the CNI, if you want to plug in um, another uh, container orchestrator like Kubernetes into NSX. The licensing is interchangeable, so if you start with NSX B, you can switch to NSX T if you want to, or back. And last, we have a couple of solutions from Cisco. Uh, one of them is the virtual topology system, VTS. The other one is the ACI. Two very different solutions, the main, um, the main difference, uh, one is what, whatever you use for uh, your hypervisor. In VTS, you will be using a virtual topology forwarder or VTF, Cisco specific software that uh, is accelerated using DPDK and VPP. For ACI, you will use uh, OVS. ACI will basically orchestrate all the flows that uh, go from VMs to, uh, into your fabric and uh, would let you either have hardware terminated VTEPs 
in your Cisco Nexus 9K for ACI. Uh, the other difference is that, yeah, that uh, so ACI supports Nexus 9K in ACI mode, and BTS will support uh, other lines of Nexus that are not necessarily in um, ACI mode, maybe in uh, fabric mode. So that's it. Those are the 10 SDN solutions for OpenStack. There are more, but this is what I can give to you in 10 minutes. Thank you.